Greetings. Whoa. Again, we have a lot. <laughs> Hi. Um, don't worry, Paul. I just started. You crossed. Oh, okay. So uh, there is a handout today, which I'll, which hasn't arrived yet, but which will arrive momentarily, and uh, it's a, it's a uh, preparation for Wednesday's talk, which will be by Herb Will, the first of our distinguished guest lectures. And uh, and uh, this is an example of something that he published very recently. It was when he when he first took over for the uh, 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 the Math Monthly. So this was January this year, uh, where he where he gives an in introduction. He decided uh, to be uh, very courageous and and write an almost monthly column uh, where he would try to present some interesting mathematical exposition. And this was uh, and and so the uh, this is just an example of his writing that you can look over before you actually hear him in person on Wednesday, uh, showing uh, the style that uh, that uh, he has uh, for exposition. I wanted to show you a couple other things of his as we get going. This is something that I received uh, in February this year, a paper that n never actually got published afterwards, but uh, worth looking at. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, okay. Here's a, um, this is a draft that he, that he sent me, you see, February. And, uh, and I just wanted to mostly show you the beginning of it. So TV man, let me just show the beginning. <laughs> okay. So here we have, um, um, now, one of the things he mentioned to me is that, uh, and I think this is this this tends to be true that somehow sometimes the title of a of a paper is too good to pass up. And you think of a good title, then you have to write the paper. Um, and uh, he's got um, uh, he's writing one now about uh, about the asteroid called Ceres and and something about the World Series, uh, uh, which uh, he thought of, and, and it's just exciting. What? <laughs> no, no, asteroid. Um, C E R E S. Uh, but it's there's some interesting mathematical calculations associated with discovering this uh, in the 19th century, and he's researching the, the history of that with uh, with some archives at Berkeley. And, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, so here's a, a a lovely a lovely title. Um, although um, I would have capital <laughs> capitalized the end. Uh, which um, since it's the first word in the title, I don't know. And and uh, uh, I said before that that, that it, it's too even even so I wouldn't have to put it in italics. Maybe to consider it as an English word. Uh, I mean everybody knows uh, 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 that N is an English. I mean like I and O are English words. Uh, uh, o is usually mostly used in poetry, but we have uh, but N is. Uh, 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 we talk about an n-tuple and that sort of, uh, and, uh, we have n-dash, which is spelled a little different. But um, it probably could be considered in a mathematical journal to be a, to be an English word, the letter n. Um, uh, I, I, you would certainly destroy the title by, by leaving out the mathematics in, the, in this particular example. Um, uh, so I showed you, an, I showed you the Gauss's thing that had too much mathematics in the title, but maybe this is tolerable. There was a, there was a paper by Ron Rivest and, um, and and Andy Yao uh, about ten years ago called "N plus one heads are better than N," and this was uh, uh, this was a generalization of the well-known result that two heads are better than one, and uh, and it was actually uh, a, a deep result on theory of Turing machines uh, that uh, would show that if you had uh, if you had a ta if you had a, a Turing machine with uh, with with uh, 11 reading heads, uh, it could actually go faster than a Turing machine with 10 reading heads and things like that. So they had this. So, but it's rare that you can have a title like that. <laughs> anyway, that, but he would. But it's clear that he, that he liked the title in that. And now now what's a fountain? And so then he t he says uh, a fountain is an arrangement of n coins in rows such that there are exactly k coins in the bottom row, and each coin in the high row touches two others. Um, and then he has figure one, a fountain, and it's clear then why it's called a fountain, and why you call it coins in a fountain, and then makes the uh, uh, ma makes a nice picture and uh, and appealing. Uh, it's appealing to read this because partly because it's short and because you can expect that it'll have some interesting mathematics. And he um, 
And uh, he, the point is that he wants to show that it has an amazing generating function shown in six below, which is, uh, which is, the, which is this function here. And, um, and then after I saw this, I told him how to tell tech not to uh, typeset it so funny and put a little more space there above that X. And, and, um, and uh, there's a thing in the tech book about this, in fact. Um, uh, but this paper was never published because uh, we uh, found out that it had already appeared. It, it's, 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 the, the other people had discussed this very thing um, before, and so uh, they didn't have such a nice title for their paper and so on, but the, but the paper died about a, a, a two, two weeks later because uh, several of us started looking at it, and we, we learned much more about these about these uh, fountains, and uh, we finally learned so much that we were able to find where they had already appeared and, and uh, in other places. Um, let's see. Uh, that's the, um, um, the only other. But, but the, uh, uh, I think you'll enjoy the lecture on Wednesday, and this is a little intro to it. Another thing that's current is today, in, in today's mail, I received from the ACM, some, uh, something that I haven't had a chance to look at very carefully yet, but it's galley proofs that have come for, for a paper. So this is part of, uh, part of mathematical writing, so since it came today, I thought I'd show, I'd show you this. So here's a, um, although it's dated September 30th, I don't know how that happens. Um, here it is. Uh, maybe they do that in order to make the author feel really guilty for not returning the galley proofs the same immediately. Huh? Um, uh, and uh, within 48 hours, look at that. <laughs> so, okay, but it is you know, it is something that's supposed to interrupt me. Maybe I shouldn't come and teach this class today. You know, I should be I should be doing these guys. Through. Well, um, now so I looked quickly to see if they had. Uh, so what does it look like? So here they have uh, they have given me the captions of the figures and they give me the uh, the subheads. Uh, that will be running on the top of the page. I, theoretically, I'm supposed to check each one of these to see if one of them is misspelled and the others are, are not, but I know they get this by a computer, so I should only have to check one, right? Um, and then I look at the Algol programs, and uh, as you and uh, since this is ACM, they've done this a lot, and so I, and, and as you can expect, this, is, this looks like it's coming out pretty good. Um, it says in the margin, bad proof, camera copy, okay, Mean, meaning that they... Um, they probably did this on a laser printer, and they, but the, it'll look okay when they do it on a high-quality machine. I don't know. Um, and uh, so, and actually, they, they've got, they've done, a, um, uh, you know, they've done a lot of pre-marking already. That they here they uh, had some glitch in their typesetting system, but they they, they know about that. And uh, here they have an author. Now they have some notes to me. AU is is author. You, you should. Realize this is uh, you know, AU. You become AU when you become, when you start communicating with uh, with other people. And uh, and here it says per Fowler. Okay, so um, uh, I, they must have changed my word uh, uh, here. Um, I must have said more clever way, and they preferred to say cleverer. Uh, it doesn't bother me, but I really had trouble. Uh, but I got upset when Scientific American changed more common to commoner. Um, and uh, uh, that didn't sound right at all to me, and I, and I, and I called them up about that. But this one was all uh, clever. I don't know. I would have said more clever there, but Fowler says, and they, and so they, had, so in other words, this is indication that a copy editor has gone over this, right? And, um, and now, um, uh, here it says um, another question to to, uh, to AU here, um, and I don't know why. What what I don't know that I can't talk about that because I don't understand what what they're, what they're doing here. Um, but here they said okay to delete of here. Yes, I had a typo in my manuscript. I said the minimum possible of value of in my original. I remember noticing that after I'd sent it off to them, and so they. They certainly, uh, they even queried that, though. So, the, so I can see that they're being very careful about uh, about making changes. And um, uh, and this is a note from the printer, not from the copy editor. The PTR, it's a note from the printer. So the printer uh, uh, caught that as he was, the guy was keyboarding, re-keyboarding the file that's already in in electronic form. But they always do that still. Um, uh, there's new journals coming out now where the 
the uh, keystrokes will go will stay in the author's form and be edited by uh, electronically instead of by retyping the whole thing in. Uh, that's that's just now happening in new journals. Uh, some AI journals, I guess, have been doing that already, uh, but that's beginning that beginning to happen. But uh, this has been all re redone. Uh, you can even see that uh, what kind of a typesetting system they have here, because it, each line uh, uh, has a has a number, so that they can go back and make the corrections by line number. Uh, they must have had to do a lot in between here when they get to these fractions. So it must be a very complicated system that they're using, whatever they do it at Waverly Press here, but they, they it comes it look comes out looking good. Um, and um, and so the printer is asking me whether or not um, they got this this formula right here. Here's an interesting thing, comment to to a author. Need to cite figures in order. Opening sentence okay. So they must have added it they must have, have given another sentence in there that I didn't write. And uh, so they're making sure that I okay it. Um, uh, examples of other methods are shown in figures 13 to 16. Smooth dot diffusion appears in figures 14 and 16. I must have given some kind of a uh, introduction that mentioned first figure 14 before I mentioned figure 13. So they they uh, they balked at that, and uh, I should have known better. Um, and now look at this. This is going to be work. Author, please supply. Here's a, in, in the bibliography. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is a conference of SPIE number 310, and these things are always very difficult to find in Terman Library here where, where we are, but please supply one, location of conference, two, city of conference, what's the difference, uh, three, date, four, public publisher, five, city of publication. Um, and, um, uh, you know, asking more more information about these things here. now. Actually, I, I thought I was do, was being rather virtuous in, in supplying as much as I did based on the scraps of it. I mean, I got I got these references uh, in some cases from um, like this one here, this this Allabach paper. I didn't know about it, and the referee had told me about it, um, and uh, gave me no clue as to what SPIE was, and uh, um, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, and uh, f you know, working a while, I was able to finally locate this this report, uh, and I had it in my hands. And most, a lot of people just copy in their bibliography. They copy uh, from somebody else's bibliography or something like that, and, and errors tend to propagate for a long time. Ellen Verlekamp said when he did his book on coding theory, he checked every reference in the bibliography uh, uh, in the library, and he found almost 50 percent. Uh, they would have been wrong if he had si simply uh, done it by citing um, uh, uh, the references that he that he was given because of, of accumulated errors uh, in other bibliographies. So it's so uh, it's you know so it's good you should check your, your things uh, directly. Uh, but here they're 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 asking authors to be really you know so somebody who didn't work as hard as I did will have a lot more of these questions sitting on there. To do in 48 hours, yeah. Um, ben Lerman suggests submitting the location of conference generally. Yeah, um, in the in the handbook for scholars, it says uh, uh, don't do, you don't need right. that. Yeah, and um, and I, I bet you why they're asking for it though is that that a, a lot of libraries now are beginning to uh, file these. Um, uh, you know, you have a conference file and it'll be by city. And so, and so, you know, people say, I don't know, I don't remember the name of this conference, but I remember that it was that it was held in Toledo, you know. And, and so, there probably weren't that many conferences held in Toledo, and so they look it up and under Toledo, and then they can scan for it. So, so this is a way of of doing it um, for for uh, for retrieval that uh, that sometimes uh, sometimes works. I don't know the difference between location of conference and city of conference. Yeah, maybe so. Okay. A uh, question. Uh, yeah. With all the things that they say, um, okay, or a question mark, is, is there a standard way to say yes, it's okay? Or I no? usually circle the okay. That's the, that's what I usually do. <laughs> I mean, that's what they usually. That's a convention I've I, I, I've seen before. Yeah. Um, uh, they it's sometimes you know they give you a choice, circle this or that. You know, but uh, uh, but it looks like I, this is very clean. I won't have to do very much changing on this uh, on these galleys. They 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 had a lot of people working over these already. It's it uh, they must have a big budget or something these years. Huh? But, uh, it's it's much better than it, it 
much better than uh, five years ago and certainly much better than 20 years ago in the kind in the quality of galleys that it got here. Well, next on Friday, I'll tell you whether that really holds true after I've looked at them carefully. Um, yeah, let's see anything else interesting. They show you proofreader's marks here, uh, but they don't they don't specifically say how to. They don't specifically answer your question, Alan. <laughs> but these are the standard proofreader marks you find over and over again, and they're getting much more standard as I mean, they used to always be standard, but different with every publisher. But now they're they tend they tend to be uh, overlapping a lot more than than other than than before, and so. You, but they remind us of they remind you of this each time what they what what to do and so on. Oh well. So that's that. It's nice to to, to actually finish something once in a while. And um, so it's usually something you don't mind doing this 48-hour job, even though it interrupts you at a random time. Okay. Now today, the main thing I wanted to talk about today was uh, is the <coughs> still. Um, uh, user manuals, and nobody has given me examples of terrible, of terrible uh, glitches in user manuals. So that means that you, that either you didn't try, you know, take me seriously, or or that you don't notice anything wrong with the user manuals of the world. Or I mean, as computer scientists, maybe we we think they're okay or something like that. But uh, I do have something to show you about user manuals anyway, because this is a class that I that I taught um, uh, a year ago. Or I guess it was only a half a year ago, um, where the uh, the students in 304 last spring quarter were given two weeks to to work on a project that involved user interface and design of a manual, and the requirement in the problem was that the manual had to fit on one page, and I was going to actually ha it was going to be designed for some of the people here recognize that they were that they were involved in this experiment. <laughs> yes, I see. Don't blush so much here, but, but I'm, I'm saying that you had only two weeks to work on it, guys, right? So, so, um, and and for this purpose, I brought in on the final day of class, I brought in um, quote naive unquote users who would actually um, be given your user this user manual for the first time to look at it and to learn how to use the system. Now, what's the system? What the system was supposed to be for a specific uh, uh, thing, which is and I call it Digiflash. Uh, and and this is uh, for this is a, uh, um, a a sign that was I think it was eight bits uh, uh, high and 256 bits wide, and it consisted of uh, fl flashing dots or you know white dots that could 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 turn on and off. And uh, so uh, uh, you see these signs around in uh, in stores and, and things now. And the idea was that uh, we were now going to make. Um, this sign is much more usable for the customer by having having a great uh, software. First of all, uh, that would that would um, uh, do neat uh, visual effects, uh, but also the user should be able to learn these how to do these effects easily, and uh, the manual would explain how to how to do it because these people who are using the sign don't uh, do this for a living. They just want to to make a you know they want to they, they want to make something that their customers can see, but th that's not their expertise to do the signs. So, so um, this was the, the, the DigiFlash experiment, and the uh, sort of the uh, the model of the story was that di that the people in DigiFlash were all engineers who know, knew how to design these these signs, but they didn't know anything about software and they didn't know anything about writing. And so uh, the students of C CS 304 were being called in as consultants to solve all these problems for them, and uh, they were supposed to design great. Um, uh, um, great software, and um, and uh, then uh, explain to the user how to do it. All right. Um, now <clears throat> uh, we got four solutions. Each was done by a team of people, and I said they had only two weeks to do it. And uh, um, the solutions uh, look uh, extremely good compared to what you. I mean, t what what. what uh, I mean, you know, sort of in the computer science milieu, if we stayed inside the Margaret Jacks Hall, these solutions would all would all look elementary and uh, and, and excellent. Um, but as I said, I brought these real naive users. You know, my wife, for example, who came in uh, to um, to look at the system, and uh, then we 
all of a sudden found out that uh, there are other people in the world that don't think this quite the same way as uh, as those of us in Margaret Jacks Hall, and um, and and so uh, there. I mean, there are people who don't know what a menu is except in the restaurant, and and uh, and, and especially they never they didn't know the word scroll, uh, what that means. Uh, uh, scroll isn't that something that you sometimes see in old, you know, uh, um, in temples or something, um, uh, or in uh, in in museums. So. Um, uh, was so uh, uh, I, I, every you know one of the things that you do on on these signs is have letters uh, move across the screen. What everybody in computer science land would call this scrolling across the screen, but they but they didn't explain that this this word to the you know uh, they just used it assuming that everybody knew what it was. And this kind of thing happens uh, um, more more than. Uh, uh, than any of us realize until we until we face the uh, the real audience for the thing. Okay. Well, now I'll show you the four solutions, uh, uh, and I and the, um, not dwelling too too long on the first one. The first one was the least successful, but I want to sort of give an increasing order of, of acceptability here uh, of, 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 of uh, not acceptability of um, of um, uh, what do you call it uh, clarity. Um, and uh, and and the first the first approach was to, to give a very logical user manual. Um, now this is one of the things that uh, we can we can uh, um, you, you know that that uh, we might assume then that that since we're computer scientists and we uh, are very logical thinkers and we put things down into algorithms step by step that this is really the way to, everybody in the world prefers to have to have this thing packaged for them. And so, um, and so here we have a, uh, a very logical presentation, um, uh, creating a message. Um, by the way, there was no introduction saying why you'd want a message or what a message is or something like that. But that's okay. We can, uh, I don't think that caused people to balk. But this got down into you can create six different types of messages, capital messages. Six, it's not spelled out. Well, these messages. Uh, this time the S is 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 is, is, is cap. Uh, differ from each other in one the way they scroll read stroll on the screen. That's that's cute. It doesn't communicate. <laughs> the person looking at this wants to find out how to use the, the, the this beast that's just been handed, right? Okay. And so so then there's um, um, uh, one sub A. Either the message starts from off screen, i.e., starts with a blank screen and scrolls the message from left, from right to left. Um, characters enter from the right end and fall off the left end of the screen, or B, the, and so on, with the message left indented. Now, notice this. I don't know. Now, I got to talk about IE here. People are. I, I'm not sure what to say about IE. I might take all the IEs out of the book I'm writing now. Although it seems to me that it's something that uh, I mean, is it formal or is it something that everybody understands as a part of our language and and reads right by it and knows exactly it's just the right word? Do you have to change that to some other word like that is, namely, or can you say I.E. and still and still be communicating well without uh, uh, to to people? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that I would never use I.E. with uh, without a comma after it. I, um, I was taught that by somebody or other that I should, that I, e.g. and i.e. I should always have be followed by some other punctuation. But um, that minor thing, the, the punctuation here is funny because it never has a space after it. Uh, comma and period characters, you know, and is this, is, is this, uh, oh, here's a space there, you know, now, now that's, you know, maybe that's a, maybe this is a new style that I just didn't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's an old style. It's actually an old style. It's the way th it's the way people used to do it in the 15th century. But, um, but um, and I think in France uh, the comma tends to be uh, sort of still straddle uh, a space between, uh, uh, or at least it did in the 30s. Uh, if you see uh, uh, James Joyce when it was when it was banned in America, it was printed in, in English in, in Paris, and it, all the commas look funny. Um, but um, uh, okay, this is a. Now, anyway, there wasn't any attention paid to presentation here of of, um, of of little details like that. But but the main 
the main problem about you, as far as user manual is concerned, is that here it's very logical. We have six ways, of, which is equal to two times three. You get to choose these two, or you have to do, do these. Now, instead of explaining the logical structure like this, which might seem very great to a computer scientist, I think what turns out that there's other that does other ways that work that work more effective, and we'll be seeing them later on in this, as we see the other solutions that people have. So, in other words. Um, uh, Formal definitions are not uh, are not the way for me to explain something to my to my uh, cousins uh, who are younger than I am. And so on. Uh, I learned that when I, you know, when I when I meet, meet them at family reunions, and I imagine other people are like that too. Uh, when you go out in the real world, <clears throat> here they have something called left indented. The message left indented. The, now, what does left indented mean? It says the first character of the message is on the left end of the screen. Now that is a rather strange use of the word. Uh, even if you're defining a technical term, indented to me means moved in from the margin. But here they're saying it's flush with the margin. It's it's right at it's right at the margin. So it's called left indented, which which is just sort of left unindented. Uh, they, they 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 left it without indenting it. I mean, <laughs> it's between me. Um, all right. Well. Um, Okay, and then look what look what happens here. Type of message one to six. Now this is a great user interface. Type a number from one to six, right? Uh, I mean there must be some. You have a whole keyboard there, and and instead and what and what they decided was to, to you know, type in a, a number from one to six, and uh, and remember what those numbers are. Um, after identifying one of the six combinations, uh, uh, okay you. Uh, you will be prompted. The screen will say such and such. You should now enter the text of the message you want the screen. And when this enter is very, um, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's all in caps, and it sort of makes the user tense. <laughs> uh, oh, how am I going to enter it? Uh, okay. And um, uh, this is, I, mean, I don't know, there must be a way to do this. I mean, we have to remember that also that these users are, are frightened of the darn machine when they come into the thing, and, and they're trying to make them feel a little comfortable. And, uh, okay, now, so my, my wife says the first thing she wants to see in a user manual is always how to get back, in case you make a mistake, how to make sure that you can recover and that you aren't breaking anything. And and um, and user manuals tend to, to, to uh, Leave this for some something that's even hard to find in the index. I mean, and and uh, for example, different different basic uh, interpreters uh, uh, have different ways of stopping. And everybody who writes a manual for how to use basic on their system seems to assume that you're never going to do anything in the world except except be running basic, and you will never want to get back to the system. And some and sometimes some of you type exit, some of you type quit, some of you type system, some of you. Type, you know, and and but how do you find this by looking in the index? There's no way to say how to stop, but you know, without without shutting the darn machine off. And and, and so you know, the users often that's the main question they want to know, and and uh, it's not addressed in the, in, in the write-up. Okay, so uh, but they did actually have a thing called exiting, uh, which uh, uh, I, I don't think a user would know what exiting means, but but it, it, the question is addressed here on the, on on, on the one page. Okay, uh, another solution was given. Um, uh, let's see, which, um, um, oh, I'm not sure how to order these now, um, but it's, uh, it's, uh, has a clever thing here, Digiflash TM, uh, to, to show, uh, how a lot of people are, have to be, you know, preserve their, uh, their trademark, uh, um, TM, uh, means that you claim it as a trademark, but it isn't registered. Um, uh, you can, anybody can say TM. Anything they want, and uh, but if it says an R with a circle in it, that means it's actually gone through and, and has some legal status. But uh, uh, but it's nice to say this anyway to try to protect your uh, thing. Um, welcome to Digiflash TM, a tool which which oh. <coughs> a tool that will allow you to create your own signs. Okay, that's nice though. I mean, except for the witch. In, in just a few minutes, you will learn to make signs 
which <laughs> will give your customers important information about your products and or prices and generally attract attention to your business. A DigiFlash TM sign is made up of a sequence of messages which you type in. These messages can be long or short and contain flashing or bold-faced letters to emphasize your special points to emphasize special points of your text. This sequence of messages is displayed continuously until you turn the machine off. So once you tell DigiFlash TM what you want it to say, you don't have to worry about it again until you want it to say something else. If, uh, so the basic idea of this exposition is good. It's, uh, it's introducing it. Then we have the, the standard thing. It's designed so that it is very easy to learn and very easy to correct mistakes you make. So enjoy. This is nice to so enjoy. Um, and, and, and I guess it's nice to, to, to also to know that, that the people who presented this thought it was easy to learn. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it makes you feel a little bit stupid when you, when you, when you find out that, that you couldn't learn it. Um, okay. Now, uh, all right. Well, um, uh, it says, uh, to use any of these fonts in your message, hold the option key down while typing one of the following keys, F flashing, B bold, V reverse video. Now, um, reverse video, I suppose, is a common term there. What are you laughing about, Rance? Huh? No, but I got a laugh out of the left uh, back there, Scott. What, what? What? What's the? Oh, I would have thought it should be an R. Oh, R for reverse video. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> R would have been would have been kind of natural for reverse. Yeah, back black and white reverse. Uh, um, but this is the worst. Uh, this is this. I think is the the the, the real glitch in his solution. It says then type the text you want to emphasize, and then type the same keystroke option with F, B, or V to enter more normal text. Now, as you're using this, this just seems completely wrong psychologically. You're sitting there and you type, and you type B to get bold, and so now you type in things, and 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 you have a WYSIWYG system. So it's so, so now if you type B, all of a sudden you're seeing bold letters as you type in there, and now. You want to type normal letters again. So what do you what do you what do you press? B. And the B now makes you takes you back to normal. <clears throat> See what I mean? It should be an N, right? Much much. Uh, I mean, even even I think that way. I mean, you know, I'm not a uh, you know I'm a very logical person, but I think uh, you know this you know if you want to change the style of letters type option and, and N, and then you would change the style of letter or something. Okay. What if you wanted to type banana in bold? No, no, no. I don't hold the app. I don't hold the option key down except to type, except to switch to uh, uh, to get to, uh, you know, this is the option. So, 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 it, you know, it should really say option B, not, you know, th then you take away, take off the option key and you say, you say banana. Um, and there was some more characters with option one would give you an airplane and stuff like this and hearts and stuff. Um, and they had a, a neat feature here, option minus would give you the current time. And I didn't have time to play with it to see if this time was up, updated, if you could make a bank type of a sign, um, uh, or if it would just give you the time that was current at the, t at the time you, you, uh, you created the message. <laughs> it's, um, Okay, and now again they use the word scroll, and that, but they have something here because they try this one slowly materialize, and so they had a, a way of, of getting getting messages in and out, um, and uh, editing the messages. This was the key thing that the user had to learn, um, and was uh, um, and it was addressed only at the sort of as an appendix. But say this is easy to do it while it's displaying your message. You may notice a mistake, um, and. That's, but the thing is, the users made the mistakes right at the beginning, and it was it was a little harder to to, to learn it. I guess just to find that part of the of the uh, of, of manual. Um, do I have any other comment on this? Not too. Not much. Um, uh, there would actually there was um, it, it would have from a computer science standpoint. I think uh, eight eight. Uh, Type styles instead of four would I mean they have normal, bold, flashing, and reverse, but these aren't mutually exclusive. You could have you could have flashing, bold, and you know black and white versus uh, black versus white, bold versus normal, and flashing versus uh, not flashing. Uh, so fairly easy to learn learn that. Flashing and then start bold. 
option F and then option D? This overrides the other one. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, the, otherwise, how would you get back? <laughs> I, you don't say normal. So anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, okay. So um, now this, uh, uh, I think this solution, um, was this the one that, no, I don't know. Anyway, as far as the write-up is concerned, um, uh, we got to move on because it, because the uh, the last one is the best, and I want to get to. I don't want to minimize it. Uh, now here's another one, which uh, uh, well, this, the title is just is an is an in joke uh, for the class, the Dijkstra Digiflash. Uh, we had we had five problems in this course, two weeks on each problem, and uh, and each of the first four problems had some connection with with Holland and the Netherlands, and we just noticed this as a theme, and we didn't see any connection between the fifth problem and the Netherlands, but it turned out that this particular group had, had uh, the initials of the people had, had a D, a J, and a K, and a S, T, and so on, but that was, that's not part of the, uh, of, of the uh, real, I mean, that's just the in-joke for the class. Now, <clears throat> your DigiFlash unit will repeatedly display a message made up of a sequence of lines, which you enter. That's a okay which there, by the way. No, also under your control is the motion style of each line as it is brought into and out of the field of view, the concept. Fairly good uh, subhead there, and it's not too bad. Uh, uh, entering a line at the sign of the flashing bar. Now, that's kind of reasonable, too. Um, um, instead of calling it a cursor, which other people did, they define a cursor. I think in one case it, it defined a cursor and then never used the term <laughs> to the rest of the page. Um, but um, um, here it's called a flashing vertical bar, and, and uh, that's useful. Oh, here it says cursor. <laughs> I think this might be the one where it doesn't need to, to actually refer to it because it's not used anywhere else. So you could get by with just call it the flashing, the flashing bar, and that was as, you, as people are typing it in, it, it was uh, fairly easy to understand that aspect of it um, and uh, there's question you know the the a, somebody who never used the machine before has to know about uh, the return key and things like that other people would sit, just say enter it and they wouldn't and they would sit there and n never know what it was the, the last the last thing to do obviously um, but um, now um, so what did I say here um, on this, so um, the left and right arrow keys may be used to position the cursor, i.e. the flashing bar, anywhere within the line. Move the cursor to the left of some character. This was the only place the cursor was used. And, and hit the up or down arrow key a few times to change the character style. So now, see, I suggested rewriting this in my notes here. I said, continue calling it the cursor a flashing bar. Uh, don't use a formal Latin term like i.e even if you punctuate it properly. Here was another way of punctuating IE, I period E colon. Um, and, um, and so um, I, I suggested changing this. The sentences are long here. So I suggested changing it to something like this. Turn on your digiflash. You will see a flashing vertical bar. This means it's ready for you to type. When you hit a key, a letter appears where the bar was flashing. Try it. To remove a letter you don't want, hit backspace. Get the idea. Shorter sentences. These sentences read re, read reasonably good English, but they're long sentences, and they and uh, uh, they're sort of mouthfuls, you know. To to when you're learning, you could do it with with a very direct approach. Okay. And um, then there was a um, motion style idea here. Um, so this is. Uh, um, a, a formal concept, which is being uh, for a formal dis explanation, it's all right. But maybe the user doesn't want isn't into formal context. So you will be asked to specify the motion style of the line exit. And this is a kind of a computery aspect. But uh, you, so you can say you can say they you can get the concept across without uh, make, making it formal. I think available styles are scroll, wipe, fl flash. Yeah, wipe is more like flush, isn't it? Well, flash and split. And you can hit question mark for a demonstration. Now that was a, 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 that was good. In other words, uh, explain you know have a feature where the where the thing where you you know you can just have them have the machine uh, show you what is what these things mean. Uh, and 
and so they, they could give an animated uh, uh, presentation instead of trying to do it in words, besides uh, saving them uh, and making it easier because I gave them a one-page restriction, and so they could put everything else into the, into the machine itself. Um, for so, for example, you have the line scroll in and then flash out. And um, now some kind of, uh, and then the choosing link for the exit motion. This was something that uh, none of the users were able to pick up. Uh, what this what this meant it was a co concept that uh, was a little more co complicated to explain um, but um, uh, the the uh, this question mark option would demonstrate link if you if if you used it um, uh, and um, uh, so so having having some kind of online documentation is certainly uh, is certainly valuable with all of these stuff all of these things um, uh, the trouble with this system really wasn't so much in the write-up, though, as in the uh, as in the user interface, which would go through prompting for five things for every line. Uh, it would say, you know, message, uh, motion style, and then enter that, and then the other one. And there was and the and the defaults uh, uh, were uh, uh, if you had it, I don't know, it, it would it would always default to a certain motion style, even though you previously you had said that you wanted scrolling, it would still give you flashing for or whatever the one default was but that was the main thing I want to show you mostly this this last one which which I felt was the most successful uh, can we have the whole page just to, instead of yeah the words first of all just to, to see this this is the page uh, manual now which has um, which has visuals uh, and it and it contains uh, uh, some some uh, you know, some kind of helpful redundancy. It's, it doesn't say everything only once. It, it, has, it's, it has things that you can find it um, as the person approaches the manual. They, they never read it in the, in, the, in the way you want them to. Uh, you know, I, I never did. I tell you this before that I, whenever I see somebody pick up one of my books in the bookstore, I see that they open it to the middle and they start reading there. And I never plan them to do, to, to do that. I, I plan them to read the preface. You know, and then go into chapter one and so on. And I, and I don't know how to stop them doing this, but they do it. <laughs> now, w now, when you do this manual, when you do this manual, you're going to find that people are, aren't, you know, they're going to, they're not going to start at the beginning and, 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 and read through it. But they're going to say, hmm, this is an, an, a, an interesting toy. I wonder what to do. And then I, I see something here and then I, I'll read that and then I'll, I'll try pushing a button or something like that. Um, well, this has useful redundancy, I think. So it starts out, but it has an overview, sort of compulsory to have an overview. Some people like to read an overview. Other people will never read this section, um, or maybe only in, in emergency. Um, but, um, but this step-by-step -step looks pretty good. Step one, type. Step two, play. Step three, fancy display. Step four, play again. Step five, experiment. And it and it and this is but this is nice this, mainly in the style of the uh, writing the short sentences uh, so now we can get closer on here uh, uh, can we zoom up now so type in your first message use the return key to begin a second one the first message disappears but don't fear the computer still remembers it and uh, things like this okay um, play hold this um, this is uh, we're using a Macintosh for the demo so we got this key that that um, uh, has this neat symbol on it, and people can understand that symbol better than calling it the control key or, or uh, right, uh, which uh, or the option key. And press P. Look, Digiflash is playing your messages one after the other. To go back to editing, use that E. Okay. Now I would probably say, uh, oh, and now it says, and here it says movement, and then it's a, and then it has this while holding this press. And, 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 and so these are, you know, this is a summary of the, of, of things that you can do. And um, I think it might have been a little better to say, well, that you, that you, that, that somehow you're holding it down uh, and not just sort of holding it. You know, I mean, that's, uh, 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 you'd be surprised how many people <laughs> will miss But um, uh, um, anyway, uh, this is, uh, uh, a lot of times, but it's, it's 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 good to emphasize that you don't first press this and then the other one. I mean, a lot of most people will make that that mistake, and they won't be used to having a typewriter where you hold, you know, the shift key maybe, but but uh, you know, you wouldn't never do some of these other things. Um, now, um, 
uh, so but the writing here was was a good way to to uh, uh, in general I think the the uh, the pace of the sentences say you want a message to blink find the message uh, you know three letters th three word sentences eight word sentences in more journalistic style here play the sequence again now your message blinks um, now <clears throat> um, the um, uh, the the least successful part of this was went, was the description of up and down uh, because uh, you have there's not a, an, an obvious concept of up what up and down means I, I, um, when you have only one line of, of a message um, and uh, so probably a choosing another word um, saying uh, previous message following message something like that instead of up and down would have uh, in the, in the uh, uh, in this write-up, would say previous uh, after you know something like that uh, would would be good. But the the uh, the, the least su successful part of this of this chart was was the, was this um, uh, was this line here. Can anybody figure out what this line means? Well, it's highlighted by the way uh, in um, in uh, uh, with a yellow uh, highlighter magic marker, uh, which you could see the uh, yeah, beautiful in color over there on this on the other screen. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, uh, there's a, th there was a nice idea here when you're when you're using the machine, it had an icon that they would put in the, at the beginning, telling you what the uh, different um, what the different things you had. You didn't have to call it a menu, but you could just hit options. Um, uh, but um, it says hold, blink, scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right. Uh, you could use another word instead of scroll, probably move. Um, uh, but these were the the ways in which that line could could be described. Oh, so, yeah. Sometimes it call, this calls it a message. Sometimes it calls it a line. And uh, probably be better to, um, to to stick to one of those two words. Um, <clears throat> and then it says use space to go through options. And so it turns out that you, if you push the space bar, it'll change the option. You know, the, and and the icons were reasonable. That, that is, a icon. You, you know, have, having a, um, some kind of a picture here. You, 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 we're dealing with a, a very small screen, only eight bits high and only 256 bits wide. But we still want to communicate with the user. And this little picture was 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 uh, quite reasonable. A hold, uh, uh, blink, uh, move. You know, the message moves in or something. But um, <clears throat> I don't. I didn't understand this line. Does anybody understand what it means? Julia? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got Yeah, okay, you got it. So I... And, then, and so I, I would... Um, uh, so my, my my first thought on it would, would have would, would have said something like it's an extra long message can be seen if you make it move. That would have been what I what I what I put in this in this line here. So I'm saying an extra long message can be seen if you make it move. And then and then uh, talk about movement under options. This 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 instead of saying scroll left, it would say move the message to the left. Something like that. Okay. Um, Okay, and um, uh, there was one other thing that I, I that I wanted to comment on, especially here. It's, this is uh, this last sentence here. It says, "Don't worry, DigiFlash 2 has been carefully redesigned not to bite." Now, now this was a little. This was apologetic. Um, in other words, it, it says, you know, you might have talked to some of our other customers, <laughs> you know. Um, but we have the new improved model now, so don't listen to them. You, know? um, you don't. But you know, if it hadn't been redesigned, that would have been a fairly good sentence. You know, you say that there's not. You know, you have having something in here saying you can't hurt this machine, and it can't hurt you. Then that would be very useful to a lot of users. But to saying it has been carefully redesigned not to bite, <laughs> that loses. <laughs> Maybe right. they were assuming that. The people had seen the other team's attempts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe so, but it doesn't come through that way to me. Um, so, um, okay, and then um, 
Uh, another nice thing at the end here, it says step five experiment. You are already a master DigiFlash 2 programmer. <laughs> DigiFlash 2, oh, I see. <laughs> a programmer. Make flashy signs to your heart's content. If you need to insert a line, use this. To delete a line, use that. Good luck. Um, good luck. That's, you know, very, very user friendly right there. Okay, any more comments? No. Now, so so Wednesday, Herb Wolf, and then on Friday, I will, I think I'm going to talk on Friday about uh, uh, either refereeing or about um, or about making illustrations for, for paper. Mm -hmm.